Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time again. This time I want to share with you a few hidden tips and tricks in After Effects CC 2020 that will improve your workflow and your techniques. So let's get started. The first tip that I want to share with you is use the effects and presets panel to apply your effects and presets. So instead of selecting a layer and going to the effects panel and then searching for your effect, it's way easier to use this panel right here. And it's even better if you undock the panel and just put it on screen somewhere. Then you can search for your effects, apply them by double clicking, and you can turn on and off this panel by pressing Ctrl and 5 on your keyboard. This makes working with After Effects way faster and easier. My next tip is to create your own keyboard shortcuts. You can do this by going to Edit and then choosing Keyboard Shortcuts. It really makes sense to assign new keyboard shortcuts depending on what tasks you face. So for example, if I use the Effects and Presets panel a lot, then I could assign it to a different keyboard shortcut because pressing Ctrl and 5 is not really comfortable and fast if you use it often. To assign a keyboard shortcut, it's very simple. You select the key that you want to use and you see here all the gray ones are actually not assigned to any to any command in After Effects. So I will use this key here, select it, then go to my search field and search for the effects and presets function. And you see here I have the window effect, show height, effects and presets panel, control five. This is exactly what I want. So I just drag this up to my key and release the mouse. And now it is additionally to control five. It will also be toggled by this key here. So I press okay, let's try it out. And you see, this works perfectly, and now again I can work even faster. My next tip is related to our views. You probably know that we have these custom views here, and I use them all the time when working with 3D compositions like this one here, where the elements are distributed in 3D space. So let me give you three hints here how you can make this even better to work with. First of all, you see that now the background layer is not visible anymore and it really looks awful. You can change the background color. So this is a little side tip here. Therefore, you go to the composition settings and just change the background color here. In my case, I want to choose white because this is actually the same style that I have in my main composition. Now, the second little tip is you can use camera tools inside all the views to move dolly or rotate your camera. So this is pretty cool. And you can do this, as I said, in all the other views as well. So in the top view, for example, you can use the camera tool to navigate through your scene. Quite useful if you want to take a look at other parts of your composition. And the last tip here, you can actually create real cameras from these positions. So let's set up a quick angle here and let's say that we want to use this. In our main composition, you just go to view and then choose create camera from 3D view. And you got a camera here now. If you go back to active camera, we have exactly the same angle as we had in our custom view. And one more little side tip to reset the view. You just choose View, Reset 3D View, and then you are back to the standard view. My next tip is how to resize a composition really quickly. For example, we have this title here. And if you enter this composition, you see that it is full size of my project, but maybe I want to size it down. So the usual way would be to composition settings and then type in a new size. Actually, there is a very quick way how you can do that, and it is called the region of interest. You see here is this button where you can activate the region of interest. Then you can draw a rectangle in every size you want, 
and then you can go to composition crop comp to region of interest boom and you're done now your composition is exactly as big as the region of interest and if you go back here you now have to reposition it but you see that you have a nice and tight composition around your title My next tip is how to change the timing of a composition very quickly. For example, this title here is animating in over the first one and a half seconds. This one here. And is animating out over the last one and a half seconds in our small composition that I've got here. Let's say I want to shorten this to five seconds. So the easiest way to do this is to right click here on these columns and add in the stretch. And now you see here in the title, we have the stretch value. If I set this now to a value of 50, it is exactly five seconds long. There's one downside when you do this. The animation now also is faster. You see now it's fully animated already before one second. So if you want to provide the length of your animation, there is a new function and that is called the responsive design time. So let's enter this composition, double click. You see that the composition is still 10 seconds long. And you also see that here is my animation. Now I can apply an intro area and that should cover your keyframes like so. And we can apply an outro area that should also cover all your keyframes here. Okay. Now let's go back to our main composition. Let's delete this for a second and bring it in again. This is important, this step. You have to bring it in again, otherwise After Effects won't realize the new areas. Let's make it 3D. Let's quickly position it again. That's the downside here that you have to re-import it into your composition. But now what I can do, if I set it to 50%, you see that now my animation area is still one and a half seconds long. So I didn't change the timing of the animation. I really just changed the duration of my title. And this also works when you export this as a MoGraph template. One more little hint, if this area is applied to a layer, then you can simply drag the length by grabbing its end. Uh, usually you cannot do this. Usually you will just uh, crop it, but you also can do it with a standard layer. You just hold down Alt and then you can drag the length, which will also change the stretch value, as you can see here. In between here, I want to show you a very simple trick, but an often overlooked one. If you take a look here and you select one of your compositions by default, you can always see frame number zero here. So everything here is empty because on frame number zero, nothing is animated on yet. But you can change that by placing your time indicator to a time in your comp where everything is animated on and visible, and then go to composition, set poster time. Now, if you select this layer you see, or this composition, you see exactly that point in time. And you can do the same with your titles. So for example, go into the title and set composition or set poster time, same here. And then you see the titles when you select these compositions here in the preview. And now it gets really interesting. So for this one, I will quickly change to another project here. And now I want to show you a feature that is often overlooked. Let's say we want to add some design to this phone here. I will just enter this. It's a little bit little bit hidden and here is our screen so first of all let's say we want to apply background here so I will just create a new solid and I will make it a color something like that a little bit yellowish okay now how can I get the alpha channel from this to this usually you would probably use a track mat like this alpha mat and you're done there is a way easier method so move your track mat on the bottom, but make sure that it is visible, otherwise it won't work. And now you just activate this little icon here. And this is called Preserve Underlying Transparency. 
And this is very powerful because you can do this with many, many, many solids and compositions. So let's say we want to design something here. Let's go to our floral pack. By the way, if you are interested in this pack that I'm using here to demonstrate all these tips and tricks, you can get this on my website. I will put a link in the video description. It's a motion graphics design pack with a lot of elements. But for now, let's just put in another design element here. Let's say we want to design our app here or our background a little bit. And again, just click this one and you see what I've got here now. It just takes over the underlaying transparency of the underlaying layers, which is really awesome. So that way you can very fast design a really nice layout and you don't have to care about track mats. This will increase your workflow tremendously. My next quick tip is related to navigating through your project. You saw when I opened up this phone that it has a lot of compositions and that it is a little bit complicated to navigate. But there is actually a really, really cool tool that will help you here. And it is called the Composition Flowchart. You can access it either here through this little icon by clicking here. And the Composition Flowchart is a visual representation of your composition. I will just make a little bit more room here that we can see a bit better what this is. You see now here is my main composition and I can open this up and then you see all the layers that are in here. But let me change the direction here, then we can see it a lot better. I always use right to left. So this is very useful. And now you can see all the elements here. And the good thing is now you don't have to go through these and open it up, open it up, open it up, open it up. But you can directly jump wherever you want. So for example, I can go in here now and I can directly go to my screen by just double clicking here. Boom, I'm in this composition. And there's even more. You can activate whether you want to see layers or whether you want to see solids, footage. There's actually a little bit of footage in here as well. And whether you want to see applied effects. So there's no effect applied, but if we do that quickly, let's go to our screen and apply an effect here. Now let's take a look here. I have to open this one up to see that. And now you see that this effect here is also displayed. And now I can come in here directly, select this, and you see that the effect is here immediately. And if I change the value, then I jump right into this composition. So the flowchart is really useful when you work with complex projects. Another small hint here, there is a small version of the flowchart that can be also very useful. And I often use them to go back to my to my first or to my main composition. And this is accessible right here. Just click this little thing and then you can navigate through your project like that. See, here is my first one, the starting point. And it's really easy to go back here. And yeah, you're not getting lost that fast using these flowcharts. Another quick tip, the shortcut for this is the tab. So this way you can navigate really quickly through your projects. And let me add in here a little side tip. If you have a lot of compositions open, then you can just select one that you want to keep and right click and choose close other timeline panels. And your timeline is cleaned up again. So my last tip is probably the most exciting one. And let me show you what I mean. So let's say I want to change the color here of this floral composition here in the corner of my design. Then I can do this by just applying a hue and saturation effect and changing this a little bit. What if I only wanted to affect a certain part of my composition? And here comes the magic. So let's open this up and let's go to our effects. And then you have this compositing options. If you click plus here, then you get options to use a mask reference. So let's draw a quick mask here.
If I assign the mask here in my mask reference, you see what will happen. Now suddenly the effect will only affect my mask area. Now I can come in here, feather it out, and move it around. And you see, I can assign effects, especially to certain areas on my composition through this mask compositing. And you can add more of these, of course. So you could add in now another mask reference, and you can do this for nearly all the effects that are available. Let's do one more, just that you get what I'm talking about here. So let's bring in a blur. Let's bring in a fast blur. Actually, I should write fast blur. It's way easier. Let's use the fast blur here. Add it to our composition. Now let's add in another mask here. Let's say this area down here. Go to my effects, fast blur, open it up, add a compositing option, and automatically it's using mask number two. Now we can come in here, blur this a little bit, and just again feather the mask. And you see how cool this is. Instead of pre-composing and using uh, adjustment layers and masks, you can do this directly on your layer or on your composition. So I think that this is really a very cool tool. Okay, so this is it with my tips and tricks for today. If you liked the video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have other recommendations about tips and tricks, then please share them in the comments. It will be really interesting what you guys come up with. Otherwise, I want to invite you to check out my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com, and there you can find a lot of After Effects stuff, templates, tutorials, and all the good stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.